Well, good morning, everyone. It's Tuesday, and I'm so glad you tuned in. We're going through the book of Ecclesiastes this week, which is a so interesting of a book because it's written different from other books of the Bible. It's actually written from the point of view of man or mankind or the world, a system of thought that does not include God. Solomon was such an interesting person. He was searching for meaning in life. He, he tried everything to make life meaningful. After he had done all that, then he writes this book. So he's older in life. And that's not unlike us. We want meaning in life. And we've tried different things. We, some of us could write a book like this. Well, we read the generalization yesterday, and there's a lot of insight in that. But today, he starts to, to now delineate through his thought process and the things that he tried. And the thing is, they all were the same. We're going to pick up verse 12. That first thing he tried was wisdom. He tried to become knowledgeable in everything. And don't we see that in the world today? The pride and, boy, I went to this school or that school. And, wow, you know, so hard to get in. And, and sometimes our pride just even comes through for our kids or our grandkids. As if the answer is going to be in knowledge. Well, Solomon, you know, he asked God for wisdom, and God made him the wisest man who ever lived, according to the Bible. But look what he says. Verse 12, chapter 1, verse 12. I, the teacher, was king of, over Israel in Jerusalem. I devoted myself to study and to explore by wisdom all that is done under heaven. What a heavy burden God has laid on men. I have seen all the things that are done under the sun. All of them are meaningless, a chasing after the wind. In fact, drop down to verse 17. He says, then I applied myself to the un understanding of wisdom. It's also madness and folly. But I learned this too, as just a chasing after the wind. You know, it's important to read and gain. God wants us to gain in knowledge, gain in wisdom. A lot of wisdom just comes from life experience, doesn't it? But the fact is, apart from God, it's meaningless. It's meaningless. So he tried wisdom. He tried to become, well, to use today's term, smart and uh, educated. Then he tried, chapter two, he tried pleasures. I never was much in the scholar realm, but I certainly have given pleasures uh, a real test. And so he, saw, he says, and just think of yourself as like thinking like Solomon. He says, I thought in my heart, come now, I will test you with pleasure to find out what is good. But that also proved to be meaningless. Laughter, I said, is foolish. And what does pleasure accomplish? I tried to cheer myself with wine. It's folly. It's folly. My mind's still guiding me with wisdom. Man is trying everything. It's so frustrating for me because the answer is so easy and clear. And Solomon finally does come to that conclusion. And we will, just like yesterday, we will end with his conclusion of the matter. But he, so he tried wisdom, he tried pleasure, then he tried work. How many people try to find their meaning in work? Verse 4, I undertook great projects. I built houses for myself and I planted vineyards. I made gardens and parks and planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made reservoirs to water groves of flourishing trees. On and on he goes. He worked hard. Verse 8, I amassed great silver and gold for myself, the treasures of kings and provinces. How many people have tried to find meaning and security, for that matter, in money and wealth? I mean, in a, in a sense, it's kind of the American way, isn't it? I remember reading, it's kind of an old illustration now, but... John D. Rockefeller was one of the richest men, well, he was the richest, I believe, of his day. And after he died, they uh, asked his secretary, well, well, how much did he leave? How much did he leave? 
how much was he worth, in other words? And she said, all of it. Isn't that the truth? The riches and wealth are what? Well, to use Solomon's term, meaningless. Meaningless. You cannot take it with you. No one has. I get a kick out of seeing some of the Egyptian uh, tombs, and they put the... They always put wealth and, and silver and gold inside with them as if, as if they were able then uh, to take it with them. Hey, verse 10. He's going back to talking about the pleasures. And, and of course, in America, that's a, a goal. I denied myself nothing my eyes desired. I refused my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my work, and this was the reward of my labor. Yet when I surveyed all that my hands had done and what I had toiled to achieve, what? Everything was meaningless. A mere chasing after the wind. Nothing was gained under the sun. That is just, it, 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 it's shocking. <sighs> kind of makes you stop and think, doesn't it? I know it does me, that the things that I spend my time on, are they meaningful? Are they going to make my life uh, rewarding? Well, there's two types. I mean, is it rewarding to you right now? It, it, it might cause some, some pleasure. I hope it does, actually. But, uh, but ultimately, the answer, the only things that last, if there, it's the Lord. It's the Lord. If the Lord wasn't there noting everything that we do and then rewarding us for that in heaven, then this life would be meaningless. It would be. Because within a generation or two, you, you and I will be completely forgotten. I can't tell you what my descendants were doing in the early 1800s. Other than maybe if I found some ancestry thing, I could find where they held some office. So actually, in verse 24 of chapter 2, Solomon gives <laughs> the answer that mankind, if they think it through, has to logically come up with. And he says, a man can do nothing better than to eat and drink and find satisfaction in his work. That's, that's the best he can do. And this too I see from the hand of God, for without him who can eat and find enjoyment. To the man who pleases him, God gives, and he lists all those things that, do, that, that God does. And uh, it's God who brings meaning to life. Without that, there is no hope. You're going to die and, and uh, be buried or have your ashes scattered. Those are your options. Neither one is that great from a, <laughs> from a worldly point of view. But that's not all there is, is it? We know there's a God. He created everything that we see. He gave it to us for our enjoyment and pleasure. But he also promises us eternal life. And so when Solomon ends his book with, here's it is. I'm going to give it every day. Chapter 12, verse 13. Fear God and keep his commandment. This is the whole duty of man. That's it. You're doing that today? You know, if you don't know God yet through his son Jesus, then just quickly pray. And Lord, I just, I want you in my life. I give my life to you. I don't know much about it yet, but I'll follow through. That's all you have to do. Give your life to him. And you will find meaning and purpose in your life. And we would love to help you on that walk. Tune in again tomorrow. We're going to delve a little bit deeper into these issues. God bless. See you then.